So why is this test not used by oncologists in the United States? Well, there's probably many reasons, but there are some similar tests being looked at and, and trying to, to do, those te do a similar type test, but most of them are using the test on tumors rather than blood because there's unique things you need to do in a certain way. You, uh, from what I understand, you need to do this so you, you're able to use those cells and find enough of the cells in the blood to make it worthwhile to, to be able to grow them and so forth. But to make a long story short, there are people looking at similar things, but they're trying to do it off of biopsies of solid tumors. And we find it best overall to use the blood, especially any time that we can to use the blood. So a lot of the oncologists are, have not heard of it and they're guided by what they're told by the associations and by the medical uh, boards, what they can use, what they can't use. So a lot of them have not ventured into using this at this point, but I can say as of this past weekend, I, uh, there is a much greater interest than I realized of the oncologist aware of this on their own. And if you probably had them in a private meeting with no cameras, no recorders, you would probably be uh, kind of awed at what they are willing to tell you. So I would say that a lot of them are looking for better ways to help the patient, but uh, they're not close yet to doing any of this. Interesting. Dr. Giannis, your thoughts? Well, uh, I would like to, uh, standing as a third party, and uh, see it from two major perspectives. Uh, most of the oncologists, no matter they are clinical or medical oncologists, they have uh, been trained under the um, mentality of evidence-based medicine, which means that they have to run uh, stati under statistic uh, preview large trials which the best outcome with the best statistics will be applicable to all patients. Uh, this is not the case, because here we are talking about personalized medicine. So each person is individual and you cannot put a treatment plan according to statistics to an individual, because it may be outside the statistic uh, preview or the statistic uh, uh, prediction. That's the first. And the second is that most of the medical oncologists are very uh, occupied by their daily work. So. Uh, it may be very difficult for them to uh, uh, look by their own, the, uh, the recent development, the articles, etc. So it means that uh, they continue to be trained and be continuously educated, but what they uh, actually uh, given to them by their association or by uh, pharmaceutical industry, etc. Uh, which makes them to be uh, much more rigid to make choices for each individual. Uh, on the other hand, uh, now that uh, for different reasons uh, evidence-based medicine has many problems to deal with uh, this plurality and these di uh, dynamic features of cancer, uh, we notice that slowly we have a shift of interest from uh, uh, the medical association, from the pharmaceutical industry to more personalized treatment. So we have a hope that slowly we will have a focus to uh, personalized medicine. This is where all these tests uh, come to a point which they become very interesting to oncologists. But we are not there yet. We are in process, but we haven't reached that point. So uh, what happens in reality is that uh, the test that they are already uh, existed, or the test approach, either they use as uh, the primary material to obtain all this information, the primary tumor, which uh, if we see what happens in clinical reality, patients actually uh, die from metastasis and not from the primary tumor just because the metastatic points doesn't behave the same way from, like the primary tumor and this is what reveals the dynamic features of cancer so that's why we need to obtain all the necessary data from uh, these cells which 
they are going to generate the metastasis. This is the reason why the circulating tumor cells and the cancer stem cells become very favorable and becoming the point of interest of the research community. So this is the one point. The second and the most difficult part is how you are going to obtain this uh, entity of circulating tumor cells. Again, there are several approaches and uh, simply the, what differs our methodology from the others is that uh, we tr since the entity of circulating tumor cells and cancer stem cells is again non-homogeneous, is heterogeneous, again, if you try to pick them out uh, by uh, basing your method on one or two markers or antigens, you may lose very important subpopulation of these cells. We preferred and we conclude that uh, what we call negative selection is the best method to subtract all the unwanted cells and whatever remains include all the heterogeneous population of circulating tumor cells. And this makes us be a little bit better than the rest. And then the rest process is straightforward. Everyone uses it. And simply the, uh, since the, the target population is uh, much more accurate, then the, the results become much more accurate, then the clinician has more uh, accurate information to utilize in clinical practice. And this is actually justified by uh, the clinical outcome when patients are treated according or based to that information.